our viewers. My name is Lucy and Jeffrey. We are very grateful to have you today. Uh, I've been hosting this TV show for a while and we're happy to have you. This show is sponsored by the Entrepreneur Nation and the Entrepreneur Nation is a business development group here in London, Ontario that we started to support businesses. Today, I have great uh, uh, members of the Entrepreneur Nation and leaders in the business community in London, Ontario that I'm going to introduce to you in a short while. Uh, so when I turn the screen, we'll be able to see our uh, guests here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Thanks, How Lucy. are you? Uh, some, these are the owners and partners of Peter Inch and Associates, uh, Eating and Cooling. I think you'll correct me if I'm wrong. And we are so happy to have you. I've been wanting to have you here for a while so you can speak to the London community about what you do. So I want to say that, Didi, because I've dealt with you for some time, I enjoy how you do business. I enjoy how you do business as a team. I like how you respond to your emails. And I believe that's how you respond to your clients. So without wasting your time then, I wanted you to introduce yourselves and we are going to focus on yourselves, on your company, entrepreneurship, your business partnership and how it's going and your interest outside of work. I've gone to the website and read about all of you and your interest are really wonderful. So do, you, do we want to start with Peter and Peter, please, to tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Lucy. Um, I have uh, grown up in the St. Thomas area. Um, that's where I went to school and uh, started to work. Uh, I've worked 45 years in the HVAC heating and air conditioning business uh, and uh, have worked uh, or have formed this partnership in the last two years to give that great old fashioned service that everybody wants, but they never get. Uh, I'm a little bit of a curling fanatic. Um, so I enjoy curling. I enjoy running curling events. So uh, a lot of people think I'm more on the curling side than the HVAC side, but they're both pretty equal. Awesome, great, great to know that, Peter. Uh, so let's go to who want to introduce themselves. Let me not put you on the spot. Who want to go next? <laughs> I can do that. Dean. Good morning, Lucy. Um, my name is Dean Timpany. I grew up in the London area here, uh, Elmer, actually. Um, this is a second career for me now. I was a licensed funeral director for 15 years, and then I have moved my, uh, my abilities over to the HVAC industry. Um, I have been doing this now for approximately, well, just over 16 years and relocated my family and myself back into the London area about 10 years ago now. Awesome. Great to know that, Dean. Um, I like bringing people on TV so we can get to know them a little bit more. Who wants to go next? I can I'll go. Just, I'll go. Awesome. Oh. Uh, uh, Josh, you let's... Go, no, you go. Josh, let's go with you first. <laughs> hey, Lucy. My name is Josh Betancourt. Uh, I was born in London, moved to St. Thomas a few years ago. Uh, I attended Fanshawe College um, for my gas technician course and Mohawk College in Hamilton for commercial refrigeration. I worked in the industry as a technician for almost 10 years now. Uh, and when I'm not uh, thinking about fixing things, I'm normally on the couch uh, praying that my Toronto Maple Leafs uh, might make it in the playoffs <laughs> this year. So, <laughs> so uh, I grew up in the St. Thomas area as well. In fact, I grew up with Peter. We and I were uh, public school and high school uh, friends. Uh, we just, he just lived a few blocks away. So we knew each other a long time. This is also my second career. Uh, my first career was uh, in the uh, racehorse business in a local breeding farm in St. Thomas. And then uh, I, I morphed into this HVAC business, which I've been doing for the past 30 years. So I'm um, thrilled to be here and, um, and echo what Peter says just about creating a company with that good old fashioned service. Awesome, great, great to know that you've known each other with Peter for a long time. So mm -hmm. let's uh, hear from Murray. Hi, good morning, thank you, Lucy. Murray Stark, uh, born and raised in uh, London, Old South London boy, uh, have, a, have had a number of uh, positions over my years. Um, I've been in HVAC for the past 15 in sales for 30 years. So. Again, I uh, love the sales industry. I love the HVAC industry and certainly have a passion 
just for connecting with people and, and finding solutions. Uh, outside of work, uh, uh, I'm a papa. Uh, both my wife, Kathy, and I uh, enjoy uh, our five grandkids. And uh, we moved last year from London into the country. And so we're loving the country life uh, here just uh, west of Ilderton. Wonderful. I'm so happy that our viewers now get to know the partners at Peter Inch and Associate and the Inch name is very well known in London, Ontario, and we are so happy to have you here. So I want to dive in into a specific business, um, but before we dive into that, I want to talk about partnerships. Um, you are all business partners, you are all founders of the business, you started it together. I want to ask Dean, how did this come about and how is it going? Well, as you know, the Inch family's been in business here now in London for, for 90, 90 plus years, and we all worked together at the previous location and in a previous business. We worked well together. We enjoyed each other's company. And when things changed over there, we decided as a group, we got together. We started talking about, as Peter mentioned earlier, wanting to bring back that good old fashioned family type service into the uh, London area that everybody again wants, but very few people are getting. And over a period of time, we were able to hash out some details that we were able to bring Peter Inch and Associates um, to the to the London community. And our goal, again, is to bring that good old fashioned family service and the partnership. It's it's always challenging when you have that that many minds together. But the partnership itself, we are we've all worked together. We all know each other and we're friends. So that uh, that always makes things a little easier. Wonderful. Great to know. Uh, so let me ask you then, Peter. So you decided to come together as partners, and I remember your story. Even the reason why I reached out to you, you said they came to you and sat down with you. I don't know if it's at the patio of the backyard, and you discussed and discussed. So you decided to form this partnership to start a business. I know starting a business like you as well, you need equipment and all that can be really expensive. How yeah. did you find it? Did you have banks really opening up the doors for you? How, how did this happen? Well, it was self-funded really by the 10 of us. Um, we all put in uh, an upfront cost that we uh, then started to form it from. Uh, we were lucky. Um, we did uh, work with the bank, but it was really the relationship we had um, with the person at the bank that allowed us to get that set up. And then with equipment suppliers, again, the relationship we had with them that allowed us to get it going and give us a little bit of terms that allowed us to, to get set up, get going, start doing work before we had all those big bills coming in. Wonderful. That's great to know. Most of us who really want to have partners like those who are chipping in, you know, because banks don't open their doors right away. They wait for you to make money and then they say, oh, yeah, you are doing well. Now we can help you. But we want exactly. help before we start. Awesome. Now, let me ask you, do you with eating and cooling and, you know, winter times and all that situations can happen, tough situations. So without really sharing your specific client experiences, and this question is going to Steve, uh, what are the tough situations do you feel that you have come across uh, with with maybe things that you have to fix overnight? I know Steve has always told me, my clients come fast, Lucy. So what are those situations? Hi, Lou. So, yes, uh, really, there are some situations. The hardest situation we deal with is when one of our technicians goes out and actually uh, has to turn the furnace, has to turn the heat off, and it's really, really cold outside. So uh, those are always difficult situations, not only for the technician, but for the homeowners. So we really have to rally as a team and as a business to uh, get that customer, get them their heat back on as quickly as possible. So. Um, because we just don't want them to be in the cold, let's say. Uh, so we really come together for those people. Uh, many times we'll talk to the technician after when he's in the, with the customer. And uh, sometimes it's, sometimes uh, earlier this year, I had, I had to drive to Barry to pick up a part uh, just to get a customer's furnace back operating again. So those are some of the things we do. And if the furnace can't be fixed that way and has to be replaced, Lucy, then we kind of rally as a team and uh, come together and get that customer get that new product installed as quickly as we can so they're not inconvenienced and we can keep the family warm. 
Wonderful. Thank you so much. So in the end of winter, people are calling you and you have to get out. You know, it's like, um, I, I, I find it like clearing the roads. We wake up in the morning, the roads are clear, but who was doing it overnight, right? So yes. we appreciate you so much for offering that service and really doing it uh, at those odd hours uh, in those tough situations. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to talk to Mari so we don't look like we have forgotten you. Um, I wanted to ask you to help our viewers to understand in details what are the services that are offered by Pira Inch and Associate? And do you also serve commercial clients or only residential clients? Good, thank you. Uh, well, we have a well-rounded uh, uh, area of expertise. Uh, we have our sales, uh, certainly with Steve, Dean, and myself. And I can't forget Vanessa, who certainly does a great job inside with uh, uh, our members and, and putting them on board uh, with, uh, with the company, we certainly have our, our technical expertise and our service end, as Steve had mentioned, uh, we're ready to respond at any time, 24-7, uh, to meet the needs of our customers in London and surrounding areas. Um, there's our maintenance plans that we have. We have uh, three levels of maintenance plans, uh, depending on what the age of your equipment is. Uh, we certainly have uh, uh, an area that we can slot you in uh, to, uh, to maintain and look after your equipment, which is so important. And yes, we do uh, look after commercial. I kind of lean on, or we all lean on Steve's expertise in the commercial end as far as in the sales uh, with his years of experience and certainly our technical staff, uh, not only residential, but certainly uh, uh, working uh, in the commercial end of it also. So yeah, we're well-rounded uh, in, in those areas. Wonderful. And I didn't value your customer service. What I said about your response times on emails, to me, I didn't like that. Uh, but I wanted to go to Josh again, Josh, so we don't look like we are forgetting you. Um, your customer service at Pira Inch is really superior. I know that I've heard from uh, people that you have served. Um, and I think that's why you decided to go and form a separate company so you can have that, that family service. Can you tell us how the customer service is different from the competition? Yeah, so, uh, you know, customer service doesn't just start from me coming to someone's home and um, attending to their needs and fixing whatever problem they have. Um, I don't know about you, Lucy, but if I come home after a long day and my TV or my internet's down, it's not a fun experience to get on the phone and, you know, and talk to maybe uh, an operating system and then, you know, being on hold a long time just to speak to someone to get service or to have someone come and take a look at your issue. So, uh, you know, customer service does really start from the first phone call. It's not a, it's not a nice phone call the customer wants to make to us, unfortunately. Uh, you know, when they call us, they typically have a problem. So we want to be there to, to, know, assist with that issue um, with as much ease uh, as possible. Um, you know, the customer, they, they may feel anxious, confused. They don't know how much anything is going to cost. So we're always, we have a local phone number that we always have someone in the office answering the phone. Uh, we're upfront with the cost. So there's no issues there. Uh, you know, whoever's answering the phone is, is um, providing a time slot. Um, we have a 24 hour response time, but most time we get there with the same day. Um, the time is provided for the customer. We show up, we provide them with a phone call, let them know we're on the way, as well as a text message with a photo of us so they know who's coming and they're prepared. Uh, and, and when we assist the customer, um, we go through all of our pricing. I like bringing the customer down personally, showing them what is wrong with the furnace, educating them a little bit, because uh, like I said, it can be a confusing experience for them. Um, but uh, we do, I, I feel like, we go out of our way to make sure the customer is satisfied and understands what the issue is and get the problem resolved as quick as possible. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I really like your company branding. Can you see, Josh, even your own name is right on the on the chat, right? Yeah. The, the, that's yeah. what we are going to talk about next time. Maybe when I invite you how you worked on your marketing, but let me leave that one for today because I want to jump on the technical side of things, right? Uh -huh. So the technical side and it's Steve who will answer this question for us. Uh, talk to us about heat pumps. I didn't know about heat pumps until when Dean started talking about it in one of our business groups and then um, what other equipment do you provide to the homeowners uh, how do they finance them is there a hand about government rebates 
are those rebates still running and uh, financing for equipment if there's no rebates how else do they finance because if an equipment has broken at night maybe they didn't have money sitting there to pay for that equipment what's going on thanks lucy um so heat pumps is that's the um that's the buzzword today uh, everybody, uh, everybody has a heat pump in their home already. They just don't realize it, and that's called the refrigerator. Uh, so the heat pump is uh, looks like an air conditioner, smells like an air conditioner, um, but it does more than that. It not only does it cool the house really, really well in the summertime, but it also can provide heat in the winter months as well. Um, previously, the heat pumps in North America maybe not maybe didn't work as well in our colder climate, but uh, technology has certainly come a long way, and now we can we can have a, a a heat pump which looks like an air conditioner outside, operate and provide heat efficiently for a customer in their home, uh, all the way to minus 20 or minus 25 degrees Celsius outside. So we've come a long way with technology, and as uh, fuel prices like natural gas have doubled over since last year with carbon taxes and everything. Uh, we have, we're realizing that uh, electricity, which is stabilizing, we're, we're finding that the government wants more and more of us to, to switch over to use these efficient systems uh, to heat, heat your home with. So that's, that's the government's focus really, Lucy, is to use less fossil fuels, rely more on electricity, and, um, and, and just get efficient ways of heating people's homes. So, uh, consumers kind of buck those things a bit. And so hence, that's why rebates are put in place to try and sensitize people to make the switch. So we can purchase a furnace and a, and a hybrid heating system with a rebate. It's going to cost you less than it would cost you just to buy a simple furnace and air conditioner. So um, the government has placed things that way just to insensitize people to make the switch. Uh, and and these systems are, you know, they're not inexpensive. And so we do have financing options for people. Uh, we can do that uh, online simply when we go into your home. If, if you want us, us to set up financing, we have two or three vendors that we can use as third party to uh, go online and, and uh, make application for you to try to make this as the seamless uh, process as possible. Uh, we do a lot of work in the home to try and and figure those things out uh, to make sure that the product that we're recommending for you is actually going to do the correct job. Uh, so we, we do a lot of, um, there, there is a, a lot of work involved, but we want to make sure that whatever we tell you to do, uh, it's going to qualify, you're going to get your rebate, you're going to be financed, and we can get that product installed in a timely manner for you. Wonderful. Great to know. Great to know that. And so now I want to come to competition, right? You have competitors out there, even the company where you left, they are your competitor, they are competitors out there. And I remember when I worked in the banking industry, they told me never worry about the competition. Always try to do better than them. Don't even talk about boundary. Don't say bad things about the competitors. Look at what they are doing and then do something better. So I was listening to the radio the other day and I had one of your competitors saying buy one get the other one free i did i don't like that buy one get free there's nothing free especially when you're talking about an equipment for five thousand ten thousand how can it be free so i knew there's a catch maybe the buy one is very expensive that actually that cost is covering the two but you tell me dean how how do you how are you different from the competitors i've never heard you saying buy one get the other one free no, Lucy, we don't we don't um, participate in marketing things like that. Our pricing is pretty straightforward. Um, we have gone out, figured out what it costs us to do the job. Um, one of my favorite um, favorite things to say is the fact that we may not be your cheapest guy out there, but we will be your lowest guy done correctly every single time. The big thing we don't do is um, we're going to go out, put our best foot forward right from the beginning, whether it's on the service side or whether it's on the sales side. We're going to put our best foot forward for the system that makes the most sense for your house 
and also for the company or the com the customer that we're speaking with um, based on the, the information that we gather when we're out there. So I know when our technicians go out, they will do a thorough inspection of the equipment, determine what's wrong with it, walk the customer through exactly what's wrong with the system and put a straightforward price, no, no gimmicks, no um, bells or whistles to it. Just tell them exactly what needs to be done to, to fix the problem for them and give them options. We will do the same thing on the sales side. We will go out, we go through a process. We do a heat gain, heat loss analysis in the home. We take and measure airflow in the household. We're gonna take and do the little things that some of the other companies don't do on a daily basis. And then from there, we have a whole series of questions that we will go through with the customer to be able to determine exactly what the right fit is for their house and what they're looking for in a new system. And then from there, we'll put together a system that best fits that for them. And again, we put straightforward pricing out there, both on sales and service. We're really not a company that's going to start to, to get into the gimmicky type, type things to try to, uh, to win over business. Yeah, and I like that you're very professional. You said that you want to give that family kind of service. And um, I like that about what you do. Um, so with that said, then I wanted to talk to Josh about the inch plan, the membership. I didn't even know about it again until Dean started talking about it in one of our groups. And I think that's how you do it so that you help your client to pay slowly so they don't have to find a surprise one day. So Josh, would you talk to us about the membership? Yeah, Lucy, we offer uh, a wide, or we work on a wide variety of equipment uh, and we offer uh, memberships for that equipment in both the residential and commercial setting. Uh, you know. Uh, Furnace, obviously furnace, air conditioners, heat pumps, but we work on fireplaces, uh, boilers. Uh, you know, we, we, there is a, quite of a, um, a list that we work on and we do offer plans uh, for a lot of that equipment. So, you know, maintenance plans are funny. A lot of people think that, um, you know, maintenance plan might be a waste of money or, you know, they really shouldn't have their equipment checked. Um, but like I was saying earlier, you know, having annual maintenance does take uh, there, there's a lot of benefits, but knowing, uh, you know, knowing that your equipment is going to be taken care of, maintained, there's no stress. You're not worried about coming home one day and the equipment not working. Um, you know, we, we drive our vehicles every single day uh, and we know that we need to, to get an oil change or rotate tires and there's maintenance involved with that. Um, but we don't really go necessarily go in the basement every day and look at our furnace or go outside and look at our air conditioner. But the reality is, um, you know, that, that piece of equipment is working just as hard as a vehicle. It's running in the background. You just don't notice it. You know, we take things for granted where you come home and it's nice and warm or it's myself working a hot day in the summer. I come home to a nice cold house, but you're not, you're not thinking about, you know, how that's happening or what's doing that. Right. So it, it definitely is important to maintain all your equipment uh, to make sure it's working efficiently. And like I said, just worry free, but, uh, we do offer plans for a lot of different equipment. Wonderful. Great. That's great to know. So um, we, I want to come down now to all the awesome things that you have done in the London community. People cannot ignore you. They have no option but to notice where you are. I wanted to ask, uh, again, because of the great work that you're doing in the community, uh, you are getting awards, and that's great. Congratulations. So I saw that you won the Leader's Choice Award. And uh, please, Mary, can you tell us a little bit about that? And what did the company do to win that? Thank you, Lucy. Yes, we are so proud uh, in our second year now, but... Uh, to be uh, the 2023 uh, Consumer Choice Award, uh, you know, presented to us uh, by our customers. Uh, as all through this program, we've talked about how important customers are and service and so on like that. So uh, we have been recognized again as the 2023 uh, Consumer Choice Award. So that's a, a huge award for us, uh, for a company that's just entered its second year. Uh, we couldn't be more proud. 
Great. And so, Peter, we have not forgotten you. So then we come back to you so we don't look like we have forgotten you. I saw that you did it in terms of giving back to the community. This company is actually doing that. And I saw that you hosted the Brea in London, Ontario in 2023, and it went extremely well. Everyone was talking about it. Tell us a little bit more. What is the Brea? Why did you decide to host it and how did it go? Well, a couple of years ago, when we were in that uh, COVID bubbles and COVID going on, uh, a bunch of us got together to discuss what could we do to really kickstart uh, London when we came out of COVID on the other side. And uh, so we put a bid in to bring the uh, Canadian Men's Curling Championship, which is called the Tim Hortons Briar, to London. And we were fortunate enough with Tourism London, the City of London, uh, the bid committee that we won the bid to host the event. And we did that in the end of February, 1st of March of uh, this year. And we brought about 10 to $14 million of economical impact to the city. But more of what we did was bring a buzz to the city where everybody downtown was busy, the restaurants, the shops, the market. It was just a lively place again and it was lively with people. And that's what we really wanted to do. And we have spent um, a lot of, you know, I said 18 months to prepare for it, for 10 days to hold a great party in downtown London and make sure everybody that came from across Canada and around the world who visited left with the memories that they'll never forget. For thank you for doing that, Peter. Definitely, thank you for doing that. We definitely appreciate you for helping out. And even when you are very busy, I can remember you sending an email to say I can't make it to that meeting because I'm doing this and that. Thank you. I great respect for all of you that I have. Um, I wanted to still talk to you, Peter. Then I reached out to you, uh, inviting you to join the CEOs club because we have a CEOs club here at the Entrepreneur Nation. I did that because I recognized your great experience and I knew that all of us were going to learn something from you. So really, I know it was not necessary for your benefit, but for the benefit all of us to have you in this network and you accepted. Uh, so you also went ahead and invited your partners to join the Entrepreneur Nation and all of you are there attending our meetings. And how is it going? How is it going, uh, Peter? It's going really well. I, I truly believe you can spend all the money in advertising you want, but networking is where you're going to make a difference. And when business slows down, the networking, again, doesn't slow down. That's where you're making those contacts and people are remembering you and giving you those phone calls. So getting the partners involved as in different chapters and getting myself involved in the CEO was, was absolutely necessary if we wanted our company to grow. And, and it's been going great. Uh, both uh, everybody is enjoying it as well as making sales. So that's always a positive. Wonderful. Great. And we definitely hope that we'll continue to support you more. The more I find that in networking, the more people know you, the more people want to support you. And the more we know now about the heat pumps and the more we know about the membership, it's not something we can get to know in one day. So the more we hear, the more we get to know about it, the more we want to tell everybody about it. I appreciate that. And as we come to an end of this uh conversation. I wanted to ask if you have any final words for our viewers. I was just going to say everyone to remember that great service is only an inch away. <laughs> awesome. And I didn't like that. You know, I liked you for that, Peter. Great service is only an inch away. And that is really the customer service tagline that has helped all of you to offer great service to your customers. And Dean, did you have any final words? I just wanted to state, uh, Lucy, on behalf of myself, Peter, and the other eight partners, our four employees, wanted to thank you very much and the entire Entrepreneur Nation to welcoming, my, welcoming us and also the City of London surrounding area, welcoming us into the community and help us make help make our first year a really successful one. We appreciate the support. And as Peter just stated, great service is only an inch away. 
Wonderful. Really excited to have you. And uh, so we are coming to an end, our viewers. This is the Entrepreneur TV show where we are showcasing the business community here, the people serve the London community. And we are so happy today to have Peter Inch and Associate joining us. Thank you so much for watching.